Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. Ten years after the end of El's battle against Light, six Death Notes fall to Earth and several new Kiras appear, forcing the task force back into action to arrest those responsible, but this time under the leadership of one of El's disciples, the new Ryuzaki. Today we will recap the story of 2008's L, change the world in 2016's Death Note, light up the new world. While L tries to find out who Kira is in the events of the 2006 Death Note movie, in the countryside of Thailand, a convoy of people wearing hazmat suits arrives in a village full of sick people, but instead of helping the population, the men just check the effects of this mysterious disease and take blood samples from the infected, coldly abandoning them as they agonize. In the midst of all this chaos, a man known only as F stays hidden watching, but as soon as he understands what is happening, the man runs to an old building where a boy is hiding and takes him to his truck. At the same time, the military finish taking samples of the wounded and leave the place without helping anyone, but as if that wasn't bad enough, as soon as they confirm that they have abandoned the place, a military plane approaches and drops a gigantic bomb on top of the village, eliminating all the sick and destroying the whole place at once. At that moment, one of the military drones spots the pickup truck running away and a helicopter begins to pursue them with the intention of eliminating any possible witnesses, and as soon as they realize they are being followed, F dictates a number and asks the boy to call and ask for Watari's protection. As soon as F finishes giving instructions, the helicopter starts firing several missiles at them, the man takes advantage of the smoke to stop the vehicle, gives the boy a mysterious cord, and returns to his truck to distract the helicopter, but is cornered and blown up a few meters ahead. At the task force headquarters, L is watching light through the security cameras when Watari receives a notification from the biomonitor revealing that F was eliminated and could not complete his mission, and upon learning this, L refuses to fail for the same reason and writes his own name in Misa Amane's death note, putting as the cause of death a heart attack in 23 days. This way he gains three more weeks to solve the case, since a name can only be written in the notebook once. In Japan's infection center, Dr. Nakaido and Dr. Kujo begin to study a mysterious virus and discover that it is a mixture of influenza and Ebola, but much more contagious and 100 times more lethal. At the same time at task force headquarters, L says goodbye to Watari who was eliminated by Kira and destroys Light and Misa's death notes, as well as communicating to the others about Watari's death, but is only answered by K. At a facade ecological foundation, Kagami, the person responsible for distributing this new virus, begins to confront his disciple Matoba for having negotiated the sale of the microorganism with various nations and expels him from the corporation, but Matoba refuses and hits his own sensei in the back, who instantly loses his life. With 19 days to go, L uses the time to concentrate and solve hundreds of cases around the world, but is interrupted when that boy from Thailand calls Watari's number and tells him everything that happened. As soon as he hears what the boy has to say, L immediately has him brought to Japan for some tests to look for symptoms of the virus, but the boy appears to be completely healthy. With nine days left and being sure that the boy is not sick, L takes him to the headquarters and takes the cord where a memory card was hidden. Upon accessing the files, L finds a recording from F saying that this boy is one of the villagers, and that for some reason, he is completely immune to the virus. At the research center, Dr. Nakaido goes to his daughter Maki and gives her a mysterious vaccine and a kind of chip. Nakaido then gives the girl a plain geometry exercise saying that this is the clue and says that she must find a certain someone and deliver the syringe, but doesn't reveal who it is. He then asks the girl to leave and calls Dr. Kujo asking her to meet him in the laboratory. At that moment Matoba arrives at the research center along with his men and begins eliminating all the scientists and security guards they meet on the way, until they arrive at the laboratory along with Dr. Kujo. Upon seeing the doctor, Nakaido says that he examined the virus and discovered that it was created there in that laboratory and tries to confront them as to why this is, but the scientist responds only by saying that she knows he produced the antidote and will take it. To prevent them from using the virus as a biological weapon, Dr. Nakaido takes the only sample he has managed to develop and puts it in a kind of furnace to incinerate it, heating it to a temperature of over 500 degrees. Upon seeing this, Matoba orders one of his henchmen to capture Maki to use her as a way to blackmail the scientist into producing other samples, but to save his daughter who is watching everything, he takes off his protective clothing and infects himself with the virus, beginning to agonize instantly. In his last moments, Nakaido orders the site's artificial intelligence to incinerate the entire laboratory, including himself. Seeing her father losing his life before her eyes, Maki starts running until she finds a taxi. In the vehicle, the girl puts the chip in her cell phone, loading a list of addresses that she shows the driver, asking him to take her to each one. In the office, while the goons are looking for some record of where they could find the antidote, 
Dr. Kujo remembers some notes she saw in Maki's notebook and passes all the numbers to a notebook sheet. Separating the digits by two, she realized that each pair represented a letter of the alphabet, forming a word that made no sense. But at this point she remembers that in the notebook there was also written the word hope, and excluding these characters she discovers that this was actually Watari's name. With this information, Dr. Kujo immediately calls L and reveals that she is the K, who answered the email, meaning that she is also a disciple of Watari. The scientist then pretends to be extremely sad about Watari's death and tries to manipulate L into helping her find the information about the antidote in the Foundation's database. L then says that he will need to understand more about this and asks her to come to him the next day. As soon as he ends the video call, L immediately begins to analyze the recording until he notices Matoba and his henchmen in the reflection of a steel sphere. The next day, Maki finally arrives at L's address and shows him the syringe of compound that he immediately identifies as a sample of the virus. Outside, Matoba's men arrive early and manage to bypass the place's security system, instantly activating the alert. As soon as she sees Dr. Kujo on the cameras, Maki tries to run away but is cornered by the woman, but L starts talking through the place's sound system, making her stop. Matoba then arrives with his men and corner Maki, who injects the virus into herself to get rid of it, so that if they touch her, they will automatically be infected. Afraid that the girl will approach and pass the disease to them, one of the henchmen takes a rifle and prepares to shoot, but L appears and manages to disarm him by throwing an object over his shoulder. He then picks Maki up on his lap and begins to carry both her and the boy outside, but the girl faints halfway. At this point, Saruga an FBI agent simply appears out of nowhere and offers to help by carrying the girl to an extremely stylish crepe van that they use to escape. Inside the vehicle, L presses a button that makes several computers appear, and with that he connects to the Watari network and deletes the Foundation's entire database. From inside, Maki says she wants to get revenge on all of them for eliminating her father, but L ignores her and puts his hand on her neck for no apparent reason. He then goes to the front of the car and starts talking to Saruga, but quickly realizes that they are being followed and asks the agent to turn into an alley so they can get out. With that L and the children begin to flee on foot while Saruga flees with the van to throw off the pursuers. Even with their lives in danger, L decides to stop at an ice cream parlor with the little ones to take a break, and while he is stuffed with candy, the boy begins to assemble the Fibonacci sequence with a few lumps of sugar, revealing himself to be a genius as well. At the same time, L tells Maki that the virus she got infected with is probably a fake, because Nikaido started feeling the symptoms immediately after coming in contact with the microorganism, while she had no change in body temperature. So that's why he put his hand on her neck. Thinking about what could have caused this, both Maki and Dr. Kujo remember that every 10 days Professor Nikaido applied a mysterious injection to the girl, meaning that this substance is keeping the virus dormant. Knowing that it is only a matter of time before they are found, L decides to continue running, but this time by train. Inside the train car, L explains that Nikaido wrote a book about infectious diseases along with Dr. Matsudo, a very experienced infectious disease specialist who was very close to Watari, so his plan is to take them both there and find out why the virus inside Maki is dormant, as well as why the boy is immune to the microorganism. While L explains his plan, Dr. Kujo goes to a news broadcast and says that a patient infected with a lethal virus has escaped from the hospital and that if anyone sees her they should stay away and report it to the authorities immediately, and then shows Maki's picture. At this moment some passengers who were watching TV on their cell phones immediately recognize the girl and panic begins to spread through the place, with everyone leaving the train car. Unable to use public transportation anymore, L gets off the train and rents two bicycles so they can ride to Dr. Matsudo's laboratory. With five days left to live, L finally makes it to Dr. Matsudo's office, and while the man fights with him for walking around with an infected woman, Maki who is taking a shower notices a strange mark on her back. As soon as she notices it, the girl immediately goes downstairs and asks Matsudo to quarantine her, but upon examining the wound, the doctor says it's just a tick bite she must have received while pedaling through the forest. After the scare, Matsudo takes L to a private room where he says that he doesn't know if he can create an antidote, but the boy says that he will help him and that he must create the antidote before Dr. Kujo does, otherwise she will sell the virus as a biological weapon and most of the human race will become extinct. Dr. Matsudo then begins by removing blood samples from Maki to analyze, and after two days of performing various experiments with the virus, he discovers that the microorganism feeds solely and exclusively on sugar, just like L. Matsudo compliments by saying that Maki's blood had a very low rate of glucose due to the injections that Nikaido injected her, and that is why the virus is dormant. But he adds that this is not enough to develop the antidote, because if they destroy the glucose cells in the blood so that the virus has no way to feed, they would also damage the girl's body, 
meaning that she would be eliminated along with the microorganism. At this point, the boy shows them that he has solved the exercise that Nakaido left for Maki, obtaining as an answer the numbers 13 and 11, and following basic logic, L interprets these numbers as letters of the alphabet, thus arriving at the letters M and K. With this message from Professor Nakaido, L starts thinking of words with these letters until Dr. Matsudo remembers the word midkine. According to Matsudo, midkine is a protein that creates and nourishes cells, helping in diseases such as cancer and Alzheimer's, so it must also fit this virus. Now knowing that midkine is the basis for the antidote, L asks Professor Matsudo if he will be able to develop it, but the doctor says that it will take five years to synthesize enough midkine. At this point L remembers that the boy was immune to the disease and assumes that his body must be full of these cells. He then asks Dr. Matsudo to take some blood samples from him and start running some tests. While everyone is distracted, Maki seizes the opportunity and starts running away, arriving at a port where she meets Dr. Kujo. As soon as she sees the woman, Maki immediately rushes towards her to eliminate her with a knife. But a henchman quickly appears and captures the girl. In the laboratory, L misses Maki and runs to look for her, but when he arrives at the port it is too late, the girl has been taken away. After arriving late, L returns to the laboratory, and analyzing Dr. Kujo's steps, he comes to the conclusion that she will use Maki to transport the virus around the world even without having an antidote. Knowing that this possibility is very high, L gets some samples of the antidote from Dr. Matsudo and asks Saruga to take him to the airport. With two days left, Matoba goes to the airport and introduces himself and Dr. Kujo as the doctors who will take Maki for an operation in the United States. Already inside the plane, Dr. Kujo is monitoring Maki's vital signs when the captain says that there is a strange vehicle on the runway and so they won't be able to take off. She then runs to the windows and in the distance sees everyone's terror, a pink crepe food truck coming at them full speed. She then runs back to the bed and removes all of Maki's devices, but while running with the girl in her arms, she ends up causing a cut on Matoba's hand, infecting him with the virus. The doctor then throws the girl into the arms of a stewardess and opens the stretcher that had two concealed scopes, and with weapons in hand, the goons take control of the plane and surrender all passengers. Seeing that the stewardess who held Maki is infected, Matoba starts asking the doctor for the antidote, but she reveals that she has never made any antidote. Matoba then gets angry saying that a buyer has already paid $100 million for the virus and the antidote, but the doctor says that he won't have to worry about the money because soon all humans will die. At that moment, Matoba kneels at her feet and begins to agonize until he convulses and is eliminated by the virus that he wanted so badly to commercialize. At this moment the stewardess who was with Maki gets up, but soon falls lifeless in the lap of some passengers, spreading the virus more and more among the crew. With everyone condemned, Dr. Kujo orders her goons to fly the plane and they begin to accelerate. At this point Suruga finally arrives at the aircraft and L needs to jump into the moving plane, but when he finally manages to get on board, he is surrendered by one of Matoba's goons who takes him inside. In the passenger area, L shows the doctor that he has managed to make the antidotes and asks her to give up this madness, but the woman who surrendered L with the shotgun jumps in front of him and takes a baby hostage to get an antidote, but ends up being eliminated by the disease almost instantly. L then takes the opportunity to give his famous speech and convince the doctor to give up her goals of eliminating the human race, saying that Watari would want her to start over. L then takes an antidote and applies it to her, and gives the bag with the others to the pilots who start vaccinating people, saving everyone from the virus. In the cabin of the plane, the henchmen who were trying to take off are wiped out by the disease, causing the aircraft to deviate its course and accelerate endlessly toward the airport. L then rushes to the cabin as fast as possible and manages to stop the plane at the last second. With everyone safe and one more day of life left, L leaves a farewell message engraved on Maki's teddy bear and takes the boy to Whammy's house where he will be trained and educated following Watari's methods. Finally, as a farewell gift, L decides to give the boy a name, naming him also Ryuzaki, his new successor. He then gives the boy a toy robot and starts walking back to the task force headquarters where he will spend his last day until he finally joins Watari. We will now move on to the events of Death Note, light up the new world. Several Death Notes have been thrown from the Shinigami world to planet Earth and countless people are taking possession of the notebooks and forming a legion of Kiras. A recording made by Light while he was still alive is calling on this army of new Death Note users to follow in his footsteps. The task force noticed a series of deaths in sequence all over Tokyo. It was clear that a new Kira was around using Shinigami eyes, she just had to look through the mass of people and write it down on her Death Note in her coat pocket. And this is why all the policemen need to hide their faces. Mishima notices the suspicious woman in the crowd and begins to chase her, but more victims die on the way, so people panic and a big mess is created. 
The girl is now standing in the middle of an intersection, eliminating everyone around her, causing a brutal slaughter. When Mishima points his gun in the distance to shoot the new Kira, a sinister masked man appears out of nowhere in the middle of the street and shoots the girl in the forehead himself. The man approaches, collects the death note and leaves. Mishima follows him through the tunnel and then we find out that this is the new Ryuzaki. L's genetic heir, and although he shot the woman, that was a tranquilizer shot, the one who killed her was another death note user. That's because she didn't follow in Light's footsteps and was killing innocent people, she was excluded from the Legion. The task force begins to analyze the death note and Ryuzaki introduces the Shinigami Beppo to the other members. Everyone who touches the notebook can see the creature, which terrifies the cops. And with this they also discover that six notebooks were sent to Earth, that is, we still have five Kiras. Meanwhile all over Japan, televisions, computers and smartphones have been hacked by a virus and Light comes up with his message of purification. Ryuzaki is suspicious that the person behind all this is someone involved in the case from 10 years ago. He wants to investigate Misa, Light's girlfriend who has had her memories erased. He is sure that there is some loose end with this girl. That evening, Misa finishes another photo shoot in the studio and goes to her dressing room. She starts to hear Light's voice calling her. She realizes that the sound is coming from the potato chip package. When she opens it, she finds a smartphone. The voice tells her to open the present on the table. Inside the box is her old death note. As she touches it, all her memories return and Ryuk welcomes the return of Misa Amane. She goes to the parking lot and gets into her car. Then she is approached by a messenger from Kira named Sheen who is in the back seat. This origami freak spread this video of light, which he picked up on a memory stick delivered by Ryuk. He also says that Yugami is alive, she just needs to collect the six death notes and the boy will find her. The girl still doesn't believe Sheen's lame story, and tells the hacker to get out of her car. Misa was being watched by the policeman of the task force, but the boy knew about it, and got a hold of the cameras. Ryuzaki returns to his home after the meeting. And then it is revealed that he is also a secret death note holder, his Shinigami is called Arma and to make matters worse he also wears the eyes of the god of death. In the midst of all this, Akira supporter named Haruna ends up suffering a heart attack in the middle of the restaurant after saying a few sentences defending all these deaths. Which proves to the police that some current death note holders are against this new Kira. One of them is the Chief Justice Mikuria, in his spare time he is eliminating all the supporters of these killings. But that day the man is approached by Sheen, Kira's messenger. He says that if the old man doesn't willingly deliver the death note he will inevitably die. And so Mikuria delivers the notebook and gets under control, to complete the mission that was involuntarily imposed on him, he goes directly to the task force central office threatening everyone with a penknife and informs them that Kira has so far eliminated three notebook holders. And then, the old man stabs the knife in his throat, taking his own life. The fourth carrier, was dead. In his apartment Sheen is collecting all the death notes of his victims in Ryuk's company. He tells the Shinigami about his motivation for all that. Light 10 years ago eliminated the criminal who killed the boy's entire family when he was a child. So Sheen decided that he would follow in Kira's footsteps from then on. He is no longer afraid and wishes to do justice. Ryuzaki revealed to the policeman, two victims who were as yet unknown carriers of the death note. The first was a Russian doctor who eliminated several of his patients and then ended up taking his own life by applying a lethal injection to himself. The second was a Wall Street investor who eliminated his clients when his company's stock rose, the man ended up jumping off the building and also died. While they were talking about the victims, Kira sent a message directly to Ryuzaki on television, ordering him to go to the Daily News and reveal his name and face. If he doesn't do this, there will be a massacre. Ryuzaki has an idea to capture this new Kira. He sends the Daily News a really bad animation of L moving his mouth and making fun of this new Kira. He gives the new Kira a website and a password so that the two of them can talk through an online chat. If the new Kira logs in, the police will be able to track him down. Obviously Sheen is smart and enters the game already prepared for the trap. The two opponents begin their conversation with sarcastic phrases in the chat and Ryuzaki suggests that it would be better to speak by voice. The supposed Kira thinks it's a great idea and uses his synthesized voice to further mock the detective's face. Meanwhile Matsuda's team has located Kira's IP address and is moving full speed ahead. Once they arrive at the apartment, Matsuda enters the room and finds a small table full of origami and a sheet of death note. But upon reading it, the man panics. The sheet says that he would enter the room accompanied by the staff, smile, and take his own life. And inevitably he does. Everyone is shocked by Matsuda's death, even Ryuzaki can't believe the trap they fell into. 
Captain Sugawara decides to extinguish the entire task force due to the event and he will take over the investigations from now on. Ryuzaki refuses to stop his investigation. He says that he will finish the game once and for all. That sentence has Mishima reflective throughout the night. How would Ryuzaki end this? Suspecting the man, he accesses the edited video with the L face that Ryuzaki sent to the daily news and runs it through analysis software, finding an encrypted message that reads, I am with the last death note. That night, as soon as Ryuzaki gets home and finds his Shinigami, he is approached by Mishima who understands his whole plan. He thinks Mishima was an undercover rat and sent the video to secretly communicate with Kira. However, Ryuzaki reveals to Detective Mishima that L made him promise only one thing when he was still a child. That he would never use the death note to defeat any Kira. Ryuzaki's Shinigami says that he had never used any of the notebook. And was keeping it in his house to protect it. Although reluctant, the detective agrees to trust the man and just leaves. But as he leaves the building he is approached by Captain Sugawara's team and taken to the police station. Mishima will be held in jail until he confesses why he hid the existence of Light Yugami's son. That's right, Light had a son with Misa in Japan, and according to the captain, Mishima had this data on his computer and hid it to protect the boy. In the prison, Ryuzaki appears in Mishima's cell and takes him at gunpoint to the Death Note vault in the possession of the police and orders the detective to release the access system to the notebook. Mishima hates that man, after all, he was set up to be arrested. But the descendant of L hands him the gun and asks him to eliminate him in the head if he really doesn't trust his plan. Ryuzaki says he will finish the game and all that is to catch Kira. He even hands the boy a key to a hiding place and tells him to be on the alert, because the Kira will come to hunt them. And to make matters worse, the two of them are now fugitives from the police, because they stole the death note. Ryuzaki proved to be telling the truth as he sent Mishima's closest partners to help him in this unofficial mission. Meanwhile the decisive meeting is about to take place. Shin is once again with Ryuk and has sent a message to Misa, telling her to take the death note to Tokyo that her mission to defeat L's successor is almost complete. Ryuzaki contacts Kira and the two arrange to meet at Higashi Station to prove that they really have the notebooks. He goes to the bench in the central area where a piece of the death note would be, and touching it, he meets Ryuk for the first time. The two exchange ironic comments and Ryuzaki says that he will defeat him just as L did. A homeless man at Shin's behest goes to the locker where the piece of Ryusaki's sheet is. And as he touches it he becomes desperate after seeing Shinigami Arma. By the reaction of the homeless man on camera, Mishima has the proof that it really was a real sheet. Ryuzaki made his way to the next meeting point. The center of the prefecture. Mishima and his team are watching from all angles looking for Kira. But all the cameras are suddenly deactivated. Radio contact has also been cut off. The agents are without communication. Mishima enters the prefecture premises alone and finds a dead security guard in the monitoring room. The computers have been hacked and are broadcasting the Kira message non-stop. Until Nanase finds the hacker's access point in a suitcase outside and upon destroying it, the whole system is back. The only problem is that Ryuzaki decides it is time to go through with the plan and leaves his face exposed in public. Here is the absurd trap. He comes face to face with Misa Imane using her Shinigami eyes. She writes the detective's real name on the sheet, Masayuki Arai, and L's successor falls lifeless to the ground. Shin approaches and takes the case with the notebooks and Misa says she knows that Light is no longer alive, but asks Shin to follow in Kira's footsteps and finish what Yagami started, and hands him the last remaining notebook. Mishima's partners run to shoot Misa, but she quickly kills them by writing their names on a sheet of paper she had kept. Mishima, who was listening to their conversation over Ryusaki's radio, runs after Shin, for he knows exactly where he is going. Misa Amane ends up dying at the time she herself stipulated on the sheets of her death note. But in the sentence she says she would die in the arms of Light Yugami in this last wish she cannot fulfill. Sheen arrives at an abandoned hotel in a sinister forest. He enters a room and opens his briefcase now containing all six death notes. He decides it's time to give up his soul in exchange for the Shinigami eyes and makes a deal with Ryuk. And so his new eyes awaken. But to his surprise, an interesting turn of events occurs. Mishima arrives there accompanied by none other than Ryuzaki. Yes, L's disciple is still alive, the death note that Shin is holding is a fake, so his Shinigami eyes are useless. Ryuzaki reveals that he wasn't killed by Misa's death note because his name is already written in someone else's death note. Ryuk accidentally reveals this information during their conversation at the station. In other words, Shin is not the new Kira, there is someone behind all this. It is then that the hacker says something fundamental that changes everything. Light left an heir to follow in his footsteps. That information that Mishima supposedly hid in his investigation to protect Light's son could really be true. 
and he just did not remember being the guardian of the new Kira because he gave up his notebook. Ryuzaki then orders the detective to touch the death note, and under pressure Mishima eventually gives in, all his memories are back. He was indeed the Kira. He decided to follow in Light's footsteps and eliminate major criminal organizations around the world. And then, not to be caught by the arrival of L's new disciple, he gave up the notebook and asked Ryuk to give it to the hacker Sheen, since the boy was a fanatical follower of Kira. Feeling betrayed for not knowing this, Sheen secretly opens his watch, and begins to write Mishima's real name on a small piece of death note, but before he can finish they are brutally attacked by a helicopter. It was Captain Sugawara's team invading the place. Even though Ryuzaki was there with his enemies, he would now have to ally himself with them, or else he would be killed by the police. Sheen takes a piece of paper and tries to use his Shinigami eyes to collect the names of the policemen, but they are all masked. But this is not a problem. With Ryuk's help he manages to remove all the masks, and so he eliminates one by one of the tactical team. More members of the squad don't stop coming and Sheen decides to run away and ends up being shot in the back. Mishima and Ryuzaki try to help him, but the boy is almost dead. The two decide to move on and Sheen stays behind to delay the police. With great effort he manages to write down a few more names on his sheet and stands up in front of the squad, being completely shot by the team. The new Kira and the new L continue to flee together through the underground tunnels of the place. Until they meet Nanase on the way. The girl seemed like she would help them, but she reveals that she knows that Mishima is Kira, and she found out that he killed her brother years ago by writing his name in the notebook, even though he was a criminal, he was from her family. So Nanase wants revenge and just as she was about to eliminate Kira, she ends up suffering an attack and falls dead to the ground. Arma, Ryusaki's Shinigami, sacrificed herself and wrote Nanase's real name to save them as a token of loyalty. Despite Ryusaki's desperation, the creature turns to dust, and so the two are captured by the task force. On the way to the police station, Mishima has his last conversation with Ryuk. The creature says that this whole game of spreading six death notes around the world is part of the King of Death's challenge. The first Shinigami who manages to elect a new Kira will assume the throne of the king in the world of the gods of death. So this game will never end. Once in prison, Mishima receives a visit from Ryuzaki. The detective tells him that the train carrying the six death notes was attacked. Four of them were destroyed by the fire of the explosion, but two were captured by criminals. A new mission will be started, because the killing has started again. Since Ryuzaki will die in a few minutes because his name was written by Mishima ages ago from his death note, he decided to switch identities with him. Mishima will live as Ryuzaki from now on, in exchange for taking on the mission of capturing the remaining notebooks. The two say goodbye, and Mishima leaves with his new identity as a private detective. L's successor ends up dead like his master, in the pages of a death note. Finally, we see a recording of Light Yagami saying that everything went as planned. Could all this still be a diabolical plan from the first Kira? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.